Here on the channel, I've covered a lot of really strong Pokemon for beating six and seven star Terrorids, and I'd like to say I've had a lot of success with them. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Game Freak really turned up the difficulty rating of these higher star Terrorids. Not really. A lot of people struggle with these when the game first came out, and a lot of people still do, including myself. You can't simply rock up to a 6 star Terroid with your playthrough Pokemon and expect to walk out victorious. You actually need to train them up and use well thought out strategies. <coughs> Uh, iron hands to even stand a chance against these monstrous terror raid bosses and this got me thinking as i've mostly used the strongest pokemon available to beat everything thrown at me so far could i beat a six star terror raid the strongest raids in scarlet and violet with the weakest pokemon that exists in the paldea decks so this is how i tried to beat a six star terror raid with the weakest pokemon in pokemon scarlet and violet first off i need to find what the weakest pokemon in the paldea decks was Using a Pokemon's base stat total is always a good measure to know how strong or weak a Pokemon is. So using this method, I looked through the Paldea decks to see what Pokemon had the lowest base stat totals in the game. And we found not only the weakest Pokemon on Paldea decks, but actually a Pokemon who had the second worst base stat total of all Pokemon that existed. Yes, lower than Magikarp, Cricketot and Caterpie, if you can believe that. The only Pokemon with a worse base stat total than the one in question was Wishy Washy with a total of 170 base stats. So I had found my partnering Pokemon. For this challenge, Sunken, the seed Pokemon, ranked lowest out of everything in the Paldea Pokedex, coming in with a meager 180 base stat total. Sunken is literally as weak a Pokemon as they come. But could we beat a six star Terrorid solo with it? Now the plan is to try and take on a six star Terrorid solo, right? But we are gonna have to set some ground rules to give us some chance of doing this. The 6 star Terror Raid Pokemon is set at level 75 with a 25 times multiplier to their HP, which for 6 star Terror Raids is actually based off their HP number at level 90 and not level 75. Yes, very complicated. And on top of this, they have multiple tools like their shields, which even further reduces damage they take and whiz, nullify stat boosts on our side of the field and stat drops on their side of the field. So we are gonna need some things to help us out at least. Oh, and also, we have to consider the raid timer as well. We only have a set amount of time to beat the terror raid boss, which increases the difficulty significantly, especially considering every time that we would get knocked out, we would incur an additional timer penalty, cutting down the overall time we actually have to beat these raid bosses. And with using such a weak Pokemon, the damage output in regards to the timer itself is something that I'm hugely concerned about. So with this in mind, I decide we will only be taking on a 6 star Terror Raid where we have a type advantage. I.e. we are using a Sunkern, a grass type Pokemon, so we can take on a water, rock or ground type 6 star Terror Raid. Having super effective damage coming off such a weak Pokemon is the only way this is going to be remotely possible. Next, we need to catch ourselves a Sunkern. I head straight to Artisan, the home of Gym Leader Brassius, the man obsessed with Sunflora's, the evolved Pokemon of Sunkern. This town is literally littered with Sunflora statues and actually has an abundance of Sunflora walking around it. So like any smart Pokemon trainer, you'd think this area out of everywhere in the Paldea region would be the location where we could find ourselves a wild Sunkern. But yep, and if you're like me, you'd be wrong. No Sunkern here. So I find the actual location I spawn and quickly catch myself a new raid partner. Now to give ourselves the best chance possible, I level Sunkern up to 100. Then I head to Montenavira to hyper train its IVs, making sure all of its stats are set to 31 using bottle caps. I then EV train it using vitamins from the Chansey Supply Store, giving it 25 HP ups, 25 iron, and use two HP feathers, two defense feathers, and four special defense feathers to max out its EVs. I also buy a modest nature mint to give it a modest nature. Then give Sunkern the moveset Sunny Day, Synthesis, Growth and Giga Drain. Having Growth is a really nice way for us to boost our special attack, so our Giga Drain does more damage. Sunny Day also has the added bonus when active on the field of making Growth a plus two boost rather than a plus one when there is no sun on the field. So this will help speed up our setup. 
Synthesis also benefits from the sun being on the field, recovering 100% of health when it is active, opposed to 50% when it's not. Giga Drain is our main way to deal damage, which also recovers health back at the same time. And as we are an unevolved Pokemon, the Eviolite item is what we have given Sunkern to hold, which gives us a 1.5 boost to Sunkern's defensive stats, which is going to be massive in these battles. As Sunkern already had the Grass Terra type when we caught it, we don't need to change this. And it also has the Chlorophyll ability, which also takes benefit from the Sun being active on the field, doubling its speed stat as long as the sun is in effect i mean this probably won't make much difference as it's so slow like its base speed is 30 so even if we double it there isn't much we're going to be outspeeding anyway solar power could be an option but it wasn't sold on losing additional hp every turn for the extra power trade-off especially when we don't have much hp to start with Oh, and I also PP max all of my moves as well, which actually comes into play a little bit later on. So with my Sunken fully trained, we give it a quick wash in our picnic area and then look for our first six star terror raid. As we are only looking for a water, ground or rock six star terror raid, I use the date skip exploit to refresh our dens until we find a suitable target. After a few resets, a six star ground terror raid pops up, which we head to investigate to see what is housed inside. It. And what do we find? We find a six star ground terror type Garganical. To put in perspective of this matchup, Garganical has a base stat total of 500. That's 320 more stats than our Sunker. I mean, it's not generally even looked at as a special attacker, but Garganical still has a higher base stat special attack than our Sunkern. But even with that aside, we do have the type advantage, so we decide to go head on in anyway. Now, as we enter into the raid, we get pretty fortunate with our partnering Pokemon here, as we are paired up with an Arcanine with Intimidate, which helps by reducing Garganical's attacking stat by one stage at the start of our battle. This, in turn, allows us to take physical type attacks a lot better. First turn we set up our sunny day whilst taking a stone edge which we take pretty well after the intimidate drop. Now straight away I'm a little bit worried. The worst thing about stone edge is it does have a high critical hit rate so if that does happen it could put a dent in our plans as critical hits ignore any stat drops like intimidate. But we move on now our sun is set the next turn we start boosting our stats with growth which under sun as I've already mentioned gives us a plus two boost in attack and special attack. We proceed to get another two growths off maxing out our special attack whilst taking a heavy slam and getting fortunate avoiding an incoming stone edge. With our special attack maxed we are now ready to start our initial onslaught and click in with the giga drain button. Expecting to do some big damage, our plus six special attack, I am shocked when we do literally roughly about a 30th of the overall health in damage to the Garganical. I now realize this might not even be possible considering we are barely even keeping up with the ray timer. Although we do have the ability to rastalize further on in this battle which will increase our damage so there is some hope. In between a barrage of heavy slams and Garganical setting up its own weather with sandstorm we fire off another two giga drains before we are then able to terrestrialize. Now I'm hoping we can really see some damage here. With the Terra boost to our grass type attacks we hit the giga drain and actually do some decent damage at least in comparison to other damage we've done so far uh, i am yes a little bit deluded at this point but with that we see Garganical throw up its shield and nullify all of our stat boots while removing all of its own stat drops so we have to kind of start the process all over again but since we terrestrialize we have to make sure now that we don't get knocked out and faint as losing our terror boost will mean this match is completely unwinnable at this point so we set up our sunny day once again, growth boost until our special attack is maxed out and all the while Arcanine is getting knocked out and cycling in and out with those intimidates to reduce Garganical's attack stat which means we're able to take damage from Stone Edge, Rock Slides and Heavy Slam a lot better. After setting up again we are ready this time with our Terrasalize Sunken to finally start our final onslaught. The second setup has really put us in a bad spot with the raid timer and I think at this point that's the one thing I'm worried about. Can we do enough damage in the time we have left? We 
doing roughly around a 30th of the damage with the shield up right now, even though we are terrestrialized. But once it's broken, our damage will increase by 25%. So that might give us the window to beat the Garganical on the timer we need. After another six Giga Drains, we finally break the shield and have only four Giga Drains left to knock out this Garganical with very little time left before the raid ends. The first Giga Drain after the shield drops does the most damage we've done all battle and brings us nearly in line with the timer for the first time since this battle began. We might actually have a chance to do this now. The next Giga Drain brings Gorganical into the red, but with only two Giga Drains left, it's looking like this is going to be very close. We fire off our second to last Giga Drain, and I know now that after this hits, with the damage that it's done, it's going to be enough to knock out the Gorganical in the next turn. But at this point, Garganical throws up the message indicating the raid timer will end also very soon. So we are on a fine timer here. With that, I fire off our last Giga Drain, which actually picks up the knockout to beat the six star terror raid. And we have finally done it with literally the weakest Pokemon in the games with our last Giga Drain and on the verge of the timer running out, we complete this six star terror raid with literally the weakest Pokemon that you can access in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We definitely had a few things in our favor here, especially having the Arcanine with Intimidate, and there was a few Stone End misses which definitely helped us out. But we are using a Sunkern, a Pokemon with 180 base stats in total, so I kind of think the things that did go our way are pretty much all right at this point. So there we go, I had done it. That's how I beat the strongest raid in the game with the weakest Pokemon that exists in the Pokemon Paldea Skull and Violet Pokedex. It is possible and it would be fun to see what other Pokemon we could do this with in future. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you'd like to see more of these Terror Raid challenges, please comment down below with what Pokemon you'd like to see me try it with next. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day and until next time, take care and bye bye.